Okay, let's get it started. Let me go ahead and this. Can y'all see me? Hi, everyone. It is Danielle Little, the cubicle chick. I am here doing my first ever Periscope Lunch and Learn today. So, guys, please, please be easy with me. I've been on Periscope. It's usually to show what I'm doing when I'm traveling and things of that nature. This is my first time actually sitting down with you to actually chat one-on-one -on -one about a topic. So since it's my first time, you know, break me in slowly. Hey, everybody. And um, hopefully um, I'll get better at this as time allows. So today, um, we're going to talk about monetizing your movement. Now, uh, the reason why I wanted to start off with this topic is because I get a lot of people asking me how I got started and how did I, you know, how do I make uh, money blogging professionally and things of that nature. And I thought, you know, these are topics that can easily utilize Periscope for since it's like the new bay on the block. That's what I call Periscope. It's a new bay on the block and everybody's using it. So I wanted to take the time to use it myself and to help you. I define success for me as being able to take care of myself, my family, and my friends on demand. And so I can't be a success if I don't help others. So I'm going to use these lunch and learn chats. I'm going to try to do one month, once a month um, in order to help you guys. Now, I want you to do me a favor. As we go through some of the things that I'm talking about today, if you have a question, I'm going to actually take little breaks throughout the um, throughout the chat. And if you have a question, just wait for me to say question, like Beyonce, I'll be like question. And then you guys will answer the question because I can't, um, I can't read all the questions at one time. So I'm going to take breaks in between and just say question. And then you guys answer, ask your questions pertaining to whatever it is I'm talking about. And then I'll answer. And then at the end, we will do a full wrap up. And if you have questions, then I didn't get to your question, then I can do so. I have charted about 30 to 45 minutes for this chat. So I hope to go everything over everything with you guys. So before I can tell you all how to make money, I got to tell y'all how my story and how I started. If you don't know already so um i was working in corporate america um hr doing hr work for years and years and years did i love my job not particularly but was i making good enough money to stay yes and what i found in around 2009 was that there was a void online for working parents there wasn't a specific place that working parents could could go to get resources to get tips to get information and so I started to create the cubiclechick.com really not knowing what I was doing but I just started to do it because I was like hey there's got to be a place a working parent resource guide online for working parents who want to get the best out of the world personally and professionally so that's how I started and about um I don't know, maybe two or uh, three months into me starting the cubiclechick.com, then um, I got laid off by my uh, from my job. And it was right before Christmas, and it was really, really sad, and I was really, really depressed. And I looked at Afrabella, which I'm sure a lot of you guys follow her um, that's jo joining this chat. I looked at Afrabella, and back in 2009, she was like my shero. Actually, she still is, because I saw that she was able to make a brand with her voice and with her blog. And so she, I looked at her and I thought, well, if she could do it, perhaps maybe I could do it too. So I really started to work really hard with the cubicle chick and being consistent and putting um, crowdsourcing, asking people what they wanted in real in, uh, in terms of career Hola, in terms of career and lifestyle and, and what topics you wanted me to cover. And it just grew. But I will tell you, it took time to grow, okay? I remember we lost, my family and I lost a lot along the way because we're a two-income family household. And then I um, lost my job. So it was kind of like we, the bottom fell out. We lost one of our cars. We lost our home. We had to downsize. We had to move into with my mother-in-law for two weeks while we got a smaller home. It was just a freaking mess. And I just remember saying, if I am consistent, if I can continue to do this, then hopefully I will begin to make some type of money, make the money. I wasn't trying to be rich. I was just trying to make the money that I was making uh, before with my job if I could just supplement that income then um, I'll be able to, to to be you know a happier mother wife everything so uh, yeah so I just started working I started grinding um, every hour on the hour I was on the cubicle chick looking at metrics doing social media and I grew my business in about two years 
about yeah about two years I started making the type of money that I was making with my full-time job and now I am making more money than I ever thought that I could before and I think a lot of that has to do with being consistent has to do with having a strategy and has to do with being focused I think if you have those three things it is hard to go wrong not just in blogging but anything that you want to do so a movement I have is defined as a group of people working together to advance their shared social, political, or artistic ideas. So when I say, a lot of people use the word brand or personal brand, and I, I use that too. But I would like to use the word movement because when you are building something, when you are trying to help other people, you aren't just brand building, you are creating a movement, a movement that can transcend even you, a movement that maybe you can pass on to the next generation so they can make money too. So I like to refer to my site, my presence as a movement. I am a working parent family advocate and my movement is to help other worker, working parent families get the best out of both of their worlds. So I want everybody to kind of think about what it is that they're doing entrepreneurially, I know that's not a word, but just rock with me. Uh, and how that can create a movement. So let's say, for instance, you have a, a lifestyle blog that is all about um, eating vegan and living a healthier lifestyle. That is not just about you and your brain and what you're doing. It's also teaching other people. So you are creating a movement. And I think that that is what some people are missing is that movement piece because when you create a movement that is contagious then other people automatically latch on they will support you they'll retweet you they will share uh, your blog post they will show up and show out anytime you have an event that is creating a movement and that is what we want to do so I'm gonna say question is there anybody that has questions for me at this point so we can kind of go forward in what you need to do to build and create a movement and monetize it. Any questions? If not, I will continue to go. Okay, I'll go. So the first um, thing, the first part of your movement should be price, what I call price, P-R-I-C-E. And that's purpose, resiliency, income, cost, and engagement. I call that price. You need all of those things in order to create a movement. Price, so, or excuse me, purpose. So what is your purpose for your movement. What is the purpose for your blog? Is it just to be seen and look like you're doing a lot of stuff? Well, that's fine. There's a lane for that, but that's not really creating a movement. A movement is something that inspires people, um, something that challenges people, some something that maybe make people feel uncomfortable every once in a while, um, but it's helping people. You Instagramming where you traveled last week and popping bottles with this or that person really isn't necessarily creating a movement. It might be showing what it is that you're doing and the hard work that you've done to get there, but it's not really showing a movement. So you need to be able to express your purpose and your passion for what it is that you're doing. And then along with that, you need to show resiliency. You need to have a story of maybe how you have bounced back from something, um, how you have gotten over something, uh, how you've used whatever it is that you've done in order to get to where you are. That is the resiliency piece. And then the income piece, of course, is how much money do you want to make? What is it that you want to make with this endeavor? Do you just want a, a few extra bucks to supplement your income? Do you want just some money to travel with? Or are you trying to make this your full-time business in what it is that you're doing? Um, and then cost, because hey, to make money, you have to spend money. So what is the cost? What is the cost that you are willing to pay uh, in order to spread your movement and get it across? Is it, you know, buying the pro hoot suite? Is it getting your domain? Is it hiring a professional web designer? Is it bringing on a social media person to run your social media? Shots out to Yellow Spinks for being my go-to social media person and who I pay, but um, it's a cost to do business and you have to be willing to pay those costs and then you need to know what those costs are. And then engagement. What is the overall engagement that you want at the end, at your end game, when you're working at the end of the month, what are your goals and what is it that you want to do to engage um, your audience? So those are the pieces that you need to think about when creating a movement. Now, one of the first things that I did, and I, I did not even know it was strategic, I did not even know that it was um, 
on the blazing trail but i started doing events locally in st louis so i focused on st louis first and then i grew it out to worldwide you know because i'm i'm worldwide now you know what i'm saying but um i focused on st louis i focused on doing an event i did show me the blog social media blogging uh conference i started that in 2010 i started that within six months of me blogging i did not know what the freak i was doing okay but i took on a conference because one there wasn't a really big uh, social media or blogging conference in or around st louis two somebody told me that i couldn't do it so i did and three i just wanted to do it and see if i could succeed so what solidified my movement my brand locally and that's where i worked first was locally was throwing an event and i just didn't throw any old kind of event i threw a social media and blogging conference which is not an easy event to throw and so what i say to you is first when you uh Think about your movement and think about monetizing. Think about your own backyard first. Because a lot of times we think about, oh, we want to we want to take over the world. We want to be on today's show. We want to be on this. We want to be on that. For Before you get to today's show, get to the in your city show. Get to the local shows that are in your area first and then work your way up. Because if you get your own city behind you, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she said SMTV rocked. Yes. Thank you, Andrea. Um, but if you get your own city to rock with you, then you can get pretty much anybody to rock with you. And what it more apparent is that I got to talk about Meek Mill and Drake, right? Drake has the whole city of Toronto rocking with him. And so everybody's rocking with him. He got the whole, I mean, Meek cannot even probably go out of his house right now. But you get your city behind you, there's really nothing you can do. So throw local events, make them hot make them sizzle, ask your friends to join you. I asked all my blogging friends, hey, I can't pay you, but I got this conference idea. It's uh, gonna be hot and you wanna be a part of it. And they came and they joined and it was a success. And I ended up doing it for three years. And in the area, there are still people that ask me about the conference and that's still what I'm known for. And um, so I use that to my advantage. So when you're thinking about monetizing your movement, start locally. I did not make money the first two years of Show Me The Blog. I broke even each year. The third year, I made a small profit. But the actual profit or the actual money that I earned from Show Me The Blog actually is priceless because I got press, I got uh, street credibility, I got respect from my peers and for my ad, from my advocates, and that still is continuing even though I'm not doing Show Me The Blog anymore, so that's what you want. So you can do tweet ups, you can do seminars, you can do workshops, you can partner with other local venues to spread the word about the event. Maybe they give you the site for free and then you do some tweeting for them or some social media training for them. Whatever it is that you want to do, just start locally, sell tickets. I, I'm Do free events, but also do some events that you can potentially make some money to. And that's one way that you can monetize your movement. So question, are there any questions or should I continue to go? Because I want to answer any questions if there are questions. Yes, no, okay. The reason why I like events is they're personal. You sh you're there, you show up. Like you can be on Twitter all day long tweeting to uh, everybody and on Facebook, but when you have an event and you show up, you're, it's personal to you, you're there, and then it becomes personal to other people. So just an FYI for that. Now the second thing is to create products or services or your toolkit. Um, my saying, I'm sure maybe you've seen it around, is the way you want to be a success, solve a problem and put a price tag to it. Um, that is kind of like my motto for everything. So now that you have created your movement, you've done an event, now it's time to create some products and services uh, around your genre. So let's say, for instance, you're a single mom and you're talking about single mom life and um, tips and tools uh, and support supports a big word for single mom. So let's say you write an ebook with all the tips and tools that you have learned from being a single mom all these years. You package it up, package it up, you make an ebook, you sell it. So that's a way that you can do it. You can do stuff like this with if it's not Periscope, you can do um, paid courses and e-training online. Um, there are a lot of people that have been doing that and being successful and making some money. Yes, it does take some extra time. Yes, um, you have to work at it. But if you consistently are doing a class that is sold out each month, then you are profiting. You are making some money if you're doing it correctly. So think of products and services that you can do. Maybe you're a fashion blogger. Maybe you blog about fashion, plus size fashion or kid fashion or whatever it is that you do. Maybe you do 
um, a handbook of the must, you, you know, every quarter, the must have trends for that particular um, season. And then you put it, you make it a PDF and you sell it online. People like stuff that's bright and shiny and all packaged up and they buy, you know. People all the time, they say, well, all right, I have all that stuff on the blog. Yeah, but people may not want to search all through your blog to get that, right? So what you can do is you could take all those posts in that particular genre, package it up in a nice PDF and sell that bad boy. And that becomes passive income. I wrote an ebook, my first one in 2011. I still get about, uh, about $125 to $150 a month, not a lot, because I don't, I don't, it's not out there. It's kind of like deep within the annals of, of, of my site, but there it's, the link is still out there and people still buy it. That's an extra $100, $125 a month that I have just for, just for the book. And like her savvy career just said, make it easy for them. Again, people don't want to go all over your website and search and look for all these articles. You're right. Make it easy for them. I say spoon feed people. The more you spoon feed them, the more you make it easier for them, the more they come back to you and buy. So um, you have to do an ebook. They're really simple. You can either do an ebook with content that you already have. You can create new content. You could partner with somebody else, collabing. 2015 and 2016 for me is all about collaboration, you know, so like stop, collaborate and listen, you know, collaborate with somebody. So maybe you don't have time to write a full ebook, but you can partner with somebody. They write half, you write half, boom, you get it together, you sell it. Yes, you have to split the profits, but two heads are better than one. That's two audiences. That's two, you know, things going on and you can actually make some money from that. So ebooks, products, services, start to get on that because the people, the six figure bloggers, the ones that are making the money are the ones that are creating product and services. Let's say you don't want to create a product. Maybe you want to uh, do a service. You can create a mastermind, a paid mastermind about the specific movement or genre that you're into and people will pay to get advice directly straight from you. Um, I pay a business coach. Maybe you can coach somebody with your expertise. Whatever it is you do, put a price tag to it. If you aren't putting a price tag to it, if you are a blogger and you are just working on sponsored posts, you are a blogger and you are just waiting for that next sponsored opportunity or that next ad to come through, boo, you are like a late model Cadillac. You are not the new blogger. These new bloggers out here, the ones that are making the money, are proactive. They're not reactive. They're not sitting at home waiting for somebody to say, hey, make $200. They are making money on their own on their own terms. And so it's very important that you create your own products and services. It just is, or you're going to get left behind. So, um, I, I, I named some, uh, I want to make sure that I get to my list. I named some ways you can make money, but you can consult. You can write an ebook, an author book. You can do podcast and sell that. Um, you can do services, just be as creative as you want, because like there are rules, but there are no rules. We are making, social media is still a new platform. We are making and changing the rules every day as we speak. So get creative, y'all, and um, get out there with your, your movement. There are people that want to hear from you. There are people that need your message. They just don't know how to get to you or you're not reaching them with your blog. So you kind of need to go above and beyond to get to those people. So now you got your events and you're making money with that. Now you got your products and services and you're starting to make money with that. Now people are starting to approach you for partnerships and things like that. That's what happened to me. And I was not ready for that. And uh, I probably lost out on a lot of money because I didn't have negotiating skills. I had negotiating skills in terms of corporate America and how to wheel and deal in corporate America. But for myself... I didn't have good negotiating skills. And I will tell you one of the reasons why I did not have good negotiating skills is because I didn't understand what I brought to the table. Okay. And that's really important in order to make money. I don't care if you're a blogger. I don't care if you are a, a landscaper. I don't care what business. If you don't understand your value and what it is that you bring to the table, then you cannot quantify that to somebody else. And then you're not going to be able to, to make the type of money that you make. So um, never low blow when you negotiate. Always aim high. Research what the standard rate is. Know what other people in your genre are charging. 
Um, my motto is under promise and over deliver. So even when I do negotiate and I do have a contract and it says, okay, do this, this, and this, I'll always do something extra. Not because I have to, but because chances are when the next opportunity comes around, they're going to think of me because I over delivered. I did more than what everybody else did. And so they're going to want to work with me again. And then be able to show metrics, be able to uh, show what it is that you did. So after I'm done, whether it's a, a campaign that I've done, if it's with working with a client, I don't know if some of my clients, um, or my blogging clients are, are joining with right now, but I always send a report at the end of our conversation. This is, see, <laughs> Regine's on here and I have to probably mute her, but this is what you have to do. You have to show metrics. You have to show why they should continue to work with you. Don't think that your work is so high and that you are so talented that you don't have to do that because the next person will do that. And it, it's a dog eat dog world out there. So be able to um, negotiate and show your metrics, but be able to put a value and a price tag on what it is that you do. I will tell you now that I've been in business this year, I have said no way more than I have said yes. It's just because I could be feeling myself. I don't know. It could be just because I'm busy doing other things. But I will tell you that I have had more success this year than I've had any other year. And it could be that I am saying no. It could be that I'm valuing myself more. It could be because I say no and then they come back and they counter. And then I say no again and they come back. Right. Then they start to give me an offer that I can't refuse. And hey, you know, then I'm going to take it. But I, I, I think that... Uh, being able to negotiate is a skill that is priceless and that could do you well, very well in business. So negotiate. So let's recap and then I'm going to go to questions to see if anybody has questions. One of the first things that you need to do with um, monetizing your message is to throw an event. Start off small. You can work big or you can just start off big like I did and go big or go home. But just start doing, uh, giving, throwing events that are not free that make money. Then um, start to uh, put a price tag to a problem and solve it for people. So whether that's a product or service, then negotiate. And then when you've done all of this, it's time to move into the big leads and that is public speaking that is maybe making a conference around what it is that you're that you're doing um it's time to then be that go-to person in that genre that people come to now there's a lot now when i started not so much but there's a lot of bloggers that blog um about uh career and lifestyle there's a lot of them now um there's not a lot of them though that are like me that blog about career and lifestyle, but also used to do HR. And then there's not a lot of bloggers like me that blog about career and lifestyle and used to be in HR and is a mother of two. And then there's not, and I can keep going on and on, see how I'm niching myself down. Niching. So yes, there's a lot of people in my field, but when it gets down to it, it's only like me and like four other people. And I am damn sure that when it's time for an opportunity or time for someone to speak, they're going to choose me. I just, that that's just how I feel. And um, there's money that comes with that. Then you get appearance fees. Then you get travel fees. This is not just going to a conference and speaking and they give you a free ticket to the conference. This is, you get paid for speaking. You get paid for being there. You get paid for your expertise. Um, I right now do work for SHRM, which is a Society of Human Resource Management. I do work in their back end with their social media. Um, you don't see me on their page. You don't see me... Um, visibly with the organization but I'm in the back room working for them so that income is almost the same income that I was making full-time working and that doesn't include all the other income streams that I have so because I have put myself as that go-to person in career and lifestyle that uh, knows her social media savvy that has a great social media presence and then able to talk in a fun uh, manner about career and lifestyle I'm that person that they go to so be that go-to person whatever it is that you're doing don't just look at what someone else is doing and repeat, try to repeat their success or try to copy them. Be your own person. Create your own lane. Everybody knows my my book from 2011. Stay in your your lane. And I really believe that you got to stay with the uh the the gifts and the the tools that God gave you. You got to stay with those and you got to share them in a unique and interesting and compelling way that makes people want to do business with you. 
So do I have any questions now before I wrap up? Because it looks like we're doing well. And I want to be able to answer your questions. Pick my brain. This is a time that you can pick my brain about any and everything that um, you have. Let's see, Danielle. This is the best message in layman terms about being yourself and authentic. Thank you, Danielle. I appreciate it. You know, I really try to keep it real. You know, I try, I, you know, even though I got my, my lipstick popping on, I'm not in my, my bonnet. So I don't know how real I'm keeping it right now. But um, I try to keep it real. Like, I want everybody to win. I'm not one of those people that is like, you know, I want to be right here, oh, up here, and I want everybody else to be down there. I want everybody to be up there with me so we can all kick it, so we can all rock. Like, that's my, that's what I want to do. Time for stay in your lane 2.0 or not. You know what? It is. It might be time for that. You're right. Let's talk about that, Andrea. Um, did you incorporate? I have not incorporated. I uh, consulted a lawyer and I'm LLC. So I'm LLC now and I plan to trademark my, my name too this year. It's first time using Periscope and really listening to your message. Oh, thank you. Uh, I remember when you started out way back before 09. Very proud of your success. Thank you so much, Danielle. I appreciate you for staying with me through my ups and downs. When should you start an LLC? Is there a sort of income measurement? There's no income measurement for LLC, for you to start an LLC, but if you're not LLC right now, you should be. Um, you can LLC cheaply in your state. And what it does is it basically separates your your you from your, your income. So you're not a DBA. Um, let's see, best way to launch a new blog, one or two tips, love this. Okay, so best way to launch it is to launch it, have it professionally designed, don't do what I did. I had the most jankiest GeoCity site when I first started. If y'all use Wayback Machine, you could see what my site used to look like. It was not good, but anyway, you know, get a professionally designed site, really think about your message, really hone down your message, and then share it with people and, and, and let it transcend, transcend with people and um, really use social media and things like Periscope and Facebook and Instagram. Instagram is popping, y'all, so utilize that. Do videos. People, I have, you know, in sales from my sales days, people buy from people they like, so be likable. If you are likable, if you're approachable, people will gravitate to you. They will show up and show out for you every time. They will visit your site. They will support you. I'm just a firm believer on that. Back on LLC, though, what an LLC can do is it can separate your your you from your business. So, for instance, let's say if I was not LLC and for some reason someone didn't like what I said and they wanted to sue the cubicle chick, they wanted to sue that. They could take all that I have. They could take everything that Danielle Little has to sue me if they win but now that i've separate my my name or my personal from the cubicle chick the cubicle chick is the business so they can take the assets of the cubicle chick shall they win but they can't take the assets of danielle so that's the reason why you should do an llc what about the irs in regards to llc well you do have to file taxes i do what's called estimated tax uh, deposits every quarter and um I, you know, I have a business credit card that's Cubicle Chick LLC and I make my purchases with that and I write them off and I pay myself also from the Cubicle Chick. That's probably another deeper, bigger conversation that we need to have just on LLC, but do it. Consult somebody and do it. Any good resources on planning and running an event in person? Uh, there was a book and I'm going to try to find it for you, Danielle. There was a book that I bought when I did show me the blog the second year because the first year I was just doing it off of my head I don't know what I was doing I, it was the Lord y'all it was the Lord that, that that helped me with that but I didn't know what I was doing second year I actually bought a book and it was a really good book and um it took you from the ins and outs of of doing an event and I'm gonna look for it and I'm gonna get it for you um Danielle and I'll tweet it to you or inbox it to you uh, but it was a really good book and it went through everything from venue to guests to um, lanyards to like everything I don't know what literally means, but it probably was because the Lord, y'all, the Lord helped me with Show Me the Blog the first year. I have some stories I could tell y'all. But um, I will tell you that doing an event, if someone, if someone were to ask me what was like the single one of the things that, you know, helped you do, be where you are today, I would say... <laughs> Yeah, the gospel singer. I would say it was throwing an event because I'm I'm still known for that. Um, in St. Louis, there still hasn't been a social media or blogging conference of its kind. There has not been in this area. Uh, and there were people that came from all over to come. And shout out to everybody that supported. 
uh let's see thank you that's what customers and listeners be on my server yeah so that's a good thing so danielle just made a really good point and she says that her customers have been asking for her to do an event through her survey and if you ever want to know what your readers or what your customers or what your clients want do a survey uh that will give you a lot because in our heads we could think we know what people want and you know we oh well it's my site so they gonna want what I want that no that no I'm sorry boo that doesn't work but when you crowdsource and you ask questions you find out strategically what they want and then you give them what they want and you keep giving them what they want and they keep paying you to give them what you want because ultimately that that's what we want we want to be paid for our services and for our work and for our value so yes Google Forms is a great way to just slap on it's a link you can you can embed it you can slap it on your site you can tweet it out and then people can fill out those that 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 survey and you can really get down to the nitty-gritty of what people want from you are there any more questions because it looks like we're 30 minutes in and I don't want this just to be about me I want you guys to be able to utilize this time to ask me questions if you like any more questions do you think banner ads are still valuable on blogs absolutely there is still money to be made with advertising um and I, I make, you know, that's one of my income streams. Like, definitely. It's not where it was like five years ago. Five years ago, you know, it was more money being made in advertising. But yes, I still think banner ads are valuable. And I still have them on my site. If you go to cubiclechick.com, they're there. But that's not only the, you know, my only source of income. I have about seven or eight streams. And that is one of them. And it's not the high one anymore. But definitely banner ads. I say also sell your own ads. We work a lot through agencies and a lot through through different organizations to get these ads. You can also self uh, sell your ads yourself. Um, and you can make quite a bit more money, you know, instead of like going through the temp agency and having them break off a little bit of the money, you can keep it off for yourself. So yes, banner ads are still, they're still popping. Um, they're just not where they were five years ago. Any other questions? Y'all are making this so easy. I was like, oh my gosh. I, I don't know what I was expecting, but you guys have made this so easy. I just want to make sure that I'm answering everybody's questions. I don't want nobody to be talking about me. Like she didn't answer my question. Are ebooks still a valid thing? Yeah, they're still a valid thing. That ebooks, ebooks ain't going nowhere. Again, like Sav, uh, her savvy career said, you, you know, pe make it simple and easy for people to get contact tent from you. The easiest way is ebooks. I tell you right now, ebooks and podcasting, if get on those two things, um, because you're spoon feeding information to people and you're giving it to them easy. Uh, so and straight no chaser. What made you use Periscope? Because, um, well, I've been using it probably since the beginning. Um, but um, I wanted to use Periscope for this because I just wanted to gauge, like, you know, before I do the e-course thing or have you guys pay, I want to see, you know, I want to gauge the interest in it. You know, this is kind of like my test, you know what I'm saying? So Periscope is awesome. Just want to say, oh, this is Raging. I'm very proud of you. I've seen your work at firsthand and you are a beast. Thank you. Yes, and I feel the same way about you. We are beasts. That's just we are. That's the Virgo nature in us. And uh, we just gonna keep, you know, doing what we do. Thank you for all the hearts and the love. Cause I feel so left behind. Like I started Periscope pretty early, but my hearts aren't where they need to be. So thank you for the hearts. I know uh, we had a touchy feely moment and we don't never get touchy feely. That's probably about as touchy feely as it'll get for us this year. It's probably this, this exchange. So um, any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Um, okay, so you guys all know how to reach me, the cubiclechick.com. That is everything Danielle Little, the cubicle chick related. Um, also on Twitter at the cubicle chick and Facebook, the cubicle chick. The next time I say something, right, I know it, it'll probably be 2018, like it'll you'll you won't skip two two weeks, um, or two years. When's the next one? That's a very good question, and I don't know, but I'm going to, um, thank you, Danielle. I am going to sit down or, or talk to Yolanda, who's my social media manager. I'm going to talk to her, see what she thought about it, and then, you know, if it's maybe something I could do. It's the beginning of August, right, the 4th, so maybe I can do another one in two weeks. I got a lot of travel coming up, but I might could squeeze one. Would you guys join me? Did you guys feel this was beneficial, useful to monetize? Your success? Did you find it helpful? Crickets? Bueller? 
I don't know. I'm, I, I'm, you know, when you're, when you're used to speaking in front of people, you get instant, like you can, you know, you get instant, like vibing with one another. It's hard to tell on Periscope, but let's see. Hells yeah. You know, you're bad. <laughs> yes. Yes. Miss the beginning. We'll catch the replay. Yes. The replay will be available. I think I'm also, cause I hear you can take this and put it on YouTube and I'm trying to set my YouTube game up. Um, and so I will put this on YouTube too, if you guys want to watch. And, um, yeah, so make that money, y'all. So listen, my, um, email address is info at the com. If you have any questions relating to how to make money, ideas, you want to, uh, you want to throw an idea, um, by, by me to see if it's a good idea, whatever it is that you want to do. And I'm sweating here like Whitney, uh, I don't know what's going on, but um, <laughs> anything that you want to do, simply email me uh, and I will do my best to respond. I am very reachable, approachable. I'm not one of those. Well, I'm not, you know, you're not paying me, so I'm not answering. I believe in order to get, you have to give. So I don't mind giving my time. So email me. Uh, right, rest in peace, Whitney. I didn't mean to make fun of her, but you know, Whitney was 90 pounds and she sweat like a hog all the time. So, whoo. I'm feeling like that too. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Um, I'm going to try to do another one of these. Is, oh, one other question for those who are still there. What other topics would you like me to cover? Is there any other topics that, um, so I can kind of get a feel for what it is that you want? If, you, if you've if you already left, uh, then you probably won't hear this question, but you can tweet me if you think of a topic later. But I want to know what you guys want to know. I want to do uh, periscopes on fear. Fear. Ooh. Okay, I don't know what the C is because I'm not much of a C girl, but I can do the fear. I can do the one on fear. I've got stories about fear, honey. Um, so fear, that's a good one. I'm going to write that down. Oh, how to overcome fear. Okay. Okay. I like that. Okay. Thank you. If you have any other ideas, hit me on Twitter and let me know and I'll be sure to incorporate those. It's all right. I'll be sure to incorporate those in future Periscopes. Setting price points. Now that's, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Setting price points. Okay. Man, fear, fear. Yeah, it will paralyze you. Exactly. And it will have you. But fear, I'm telling you, is nothing but the enemy. Okay. Fear wasn't, is, is, is the enemy's tool to you. But we'll, we'll talk about that because that, I'm, I'm getting deep. And, you know, this is not that conversation, that kind of conversation. But, yeah, fear and setting price points. I can definitely put that on the schedule for some future Periscopes. So I'm going to sign off. Thank you guys so much um, for tuning in, for supporting. I appreciate you. And I will be back in a couple of weeks, hopefully, um, with another Periscope. And please make sure, oops, please make sure to give me um, some ideas on what the next Periscope should be. Toodles.